Let's order. And it's my shout. 你好，我很好。Come sta, ma buti naman. Cool is that, ora? Ich danke Ihnen. Ciao. Come sta? And konnichiwa. Many languages that you can hear in Canada today. Statistics Canada shows about two in ten Canadians speak a different language other than English or French, and more than two hundred languages are spoken. Our diversity, the resilience that comes from Prime Minister Justin Trudeau strongly encourages the Canadian multiculturalism. What we share with the world, loudly and proudly, when we gather together. Speaking of diversity, more than one in five Canadians are immigrants, and more than half of them come from Asia. But the Japanese population in Canada is less than one percent. I interviewed one Japanese Canadian and one Japanese immigrant at this time. This show will tell you why they ended up to live in Canada and how they made a decision. Can I get your full name, please? Well, my name is Kyo Shibatani. I'm 88 years old. Well, my parents are from Shiga, Japan. My dad immigrated in the, in the 1920s. He came first as a bachelor, and then he went back to Japan to marry my mom, and then he brought my mom. To、uh, Vancouver in the early 1920s, my dad and my mom were both rice farmers, so they spoke no English. The reason my dad decided to come to Canada was because he had a friend in the same village, so he decided to come to Canada, and that's where our family history starts. After move to Canada, what did your father do? Having no money and speaking no English, and the、uh, <coughs> Japanese people had different customs compared to the people who had come to Canada from Europe. As Japan was so different, the only jobs available were physical labor jobs. Most of the Japanese at the time went into. The、uh, mountains to to work in logging camps. There were already quite a number of Japanese living in Vancouver at the time. In order to immigrate to Canada, if you're Chinese, you had to come up with five hundred dollars. In those days, that's like maybe more than five thousand today. Before you can immigrate, you paid that. The Japanese were able to immigrate to Canada. And not have to pay a head tax. There was a little bit more respect for the Japanese government than the Chinese government. So we were fortunate in that sense. Otherwise, there'd be far fewer Japanese immigrants. I met Kale through Japanese Canadian Cultural Center. It's called JCCC, and one of their programs shows that history of Japanese immigration to Canada can divide two different timelines. It says the first generation of Japanese immigrants came to Canada in the 1800s, but the Japanese immigration stopped completely when World War II began and resumed after 1967. Tell me about your childhood, Kao-san. There's lots of discriminations. You could not become a doctor, engineer, lawyer, accountant, a pharmacist. All the professions. This is how hard the Nisei's worked, because their parents encouraged them to go to school, stay in school, and those who had already graduated from university, what kind of work are they doing? They're grocery delivery boys. Well, those grocery stores, in many instances, were owned by Japanese people. So they hire these university kids because they they can't get a job anywhere else. These days, in different age groups, can see that all I can do, even after four years of university, not much of a future, right? All because of the discriminatory laws that apply to Asians. And the economy was just starting to pick up when the war started. So a lot of people think. War is a good thing, because everybody gets a job, and everybody makes lots of money. Okay, from an economic standpoint, lots of people think that. So there's a big difference between the initial immigrants and the immigrants today. 
here is a Japanese immigrant who decided to move to Canada recently. My name is Nanako Mizutani. My background uh, is Japanese. I came to Canada about 11 years ago when I was 19. So I applied PR about uh, seven years ago. The reason why I chose to obtain my uh, permanent residence was that uh, I wanted to leave this country. A lot of people with uh, so many different diversity here and then also makes me want to pursue my uh, dream which is to open my own store and then in order to have better life in Canada I need to have a sustainable uh, status. How difficult was that? I would say the um, hardest part to get a PR was to find a manager position right away but I would say the, the most hardest part was the waiting time. I think after I applied, it took me about two years to meet the criteria. What's your next step, Nana-san? Now it's a time to uh, extend my permanent residency or to switch to citizenship. As far as I know, the Canada, after you obtain three years of a permanent residency, then you are able to apply for a citizenship. So most likely, I'm going to apply within this year. In fact, some countries are unlikely to be able to have a dual citizenship like Japan. So why do you want to apply for Canadian citizenship? I've lived here over 10 years now and I do not have any personal asset in Japan. Like, I don't have my house or anything. And then I have a business in Canada. So I guess it makes sense for me to get a citizenship here, live this country permanently. Giving up my uh, Japanese citizenship is more than just a paperwork, because that's your identity and it was my 19 years of life in there. <laughs> that's the part of the reason why I'm hesitating to get a citizenship. But if I put on the scale, I guess uh, being Canadian citizen, that makes more sense for me. Unfortunately, I have to give up on the uh, Japanese citizenship. I'm Amy Takahata. Thank you for listening.